G'day. The other day I had someone contact me. They needed a nut made up for a grinder spindle. They couldn't tell me much about it. It was inch diameter. Uh, it was castellated. And they could give me a right hand nut, uh, but they wanted a left hand nut. And that was about it. And so this clip is, is basically how I worked out what it was and um, you know all the, all the tricks to, to making it. Making the actual nut was a really bit of an anti-climax. It uh, didn't take terribly long. But working out what the thread was and working out how to gauge the thread uh, did take a little bit longer. Uh, as with a lot of these jobs, the setup and the, and the preparation that takes the time. But uh, it was an interesting little, little um, thing to do because uh, it was a non-standard thread. This is the nut. I've measured it with my screw pitch gauges and it's 14 TPI. Now, a UNF nut is 12 TPI, but through some quirk and non-enforcement of standards and all that sort of thing, there was a stage when it was 14 TPI. Strictly speaking, that's a UNS nut. But as a result, I haven't got taps for it. I haven't got particularly left hand taps. And so I'm basically going to have to single point this. Now, all I've got is this right hand nut. So to work out what sort of fit I need, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a right hand thread on this bit of bar stock. So it's a nice comfortable fit on this. Then duplicate that on the other end. So I've got a left hand thread, which is a nice comfortable fit. And then I can get to cutting the, um, the, the nut itself. Uh, it's a roundabout way of doing it, but it makes sure I get two nuts, which have got the same sort of fit on them. Uh, and sometimes these are the things you've got to work through. I've got my Zeus book here, and sure enough, UNF is one inch is twelve U uh, is is twelve TPI. So what I'm going to have to do is use the depth of um, thread setting. Sorry, here we go, depth of thread for a seven eight fourteen TPI uh, thread. And that way, that'll give me the rough depth to go to. So I'm going to go to that sort of depth. Then I'm going to try the nut on till I get to a nice comfortable fit. And then once I've done that, I can take a measurement of how far I've gone in, flip the bar over, do a left-hand version of it, and, uh, and go from there. I've taken the depth of cut here to uh, 42 thou, uh, and the target is uh, 44. Uh, one thing I have, I do do when I cut threads like this is I'll run a file across the top of the, the threads just to knock any burrs off the top. Um, it doesn't matter too much. As you can see, that one starts to go on, but not quite. So I reckon if I take another couple of thou out of that, that should go on quite nicely. My depth of cut here ended up being uh, 90... Sorry, on diameter it was 92 thou, so on radius 46. So I was 2 thou over the, the depth of cut in my uh, table, uh, but my stock was slightly undersized anyway, so that's about right. Um, I've now got that so the, the nut threads on there nicely. One of the problems, particularly with something like a castellated nut here, is that these castellations can... Uh, be damaged and so um, you know when you're getting towards the end of the thread is it because of the damage to the castellations or is it because of the thread isn't quite right so usually what you do then is you turn around the the nut uh, and thread that out on and off you go now I, I must admit here to cheating I had to get a um, a tap out I discovered I did have an inch by 14 TPI uh, UN tap don't know why I had it, but I've got one, uh, and I, I had to, to to clean up the threads here because they were a little bit burred. Uh, so that's a that's a something you need to watch for when doing uh, things like a, a castellated nut. But that goes on now nicely. Now uh, I can now turn this bit of bar stock around and put a left hand version of this thread on the other end, and that should fingers crossed. Uh, give me something I can then work on to uh, to make up the um, the the nut, the left hand nut for this. Here's my resultant thread. Um, 
It's full depth around about there, which is what I need. I need about 10 millimeters or so. Uh, this is this is purely running uh, because I'm I'm doing it without a, a groove. I need to set the lathe going and then bring the tool into to depth. The first few passes, um, it's just a matter of winding the tool in until it, it, it takes the material out. Uh, but towards the end there, you have to wind down to a specific depth. Uh, in this case, the same as this end, so 92. Uh, and there I've got a left hand thread. Now I need to um, hex up some uh, round stock so I can make some, some nuts. It's a non-standard size and I haven't got the, the, the hex. Um, but I'll then basically cut some nuts that fit that uh, to the same degree that that nut fits this one. One of the problems with this nut is that it's, it's very thin um, and I only want one of them so it doesn't make much sense to me to be making um, or putting a hex on a whole length of bar so the, the original thought was gear, get a length of bar, make it turn into a hex um, but an uh, inch, and, inch and a quarter uh, AF hex I really haven't got a use for. So what I did instead was I've, I've taken out to the the OD, uh, sorry, the, uh, the the major diameter of the hex, some bits of bar stock, cut them out to the the or parted them off to the the width I want. That's a 16 hole there. That's just been drilled. What I'm going to do now is set this up in the um, three door chuck and bore that out to three quarter inch. And the reason for that is I'm going to mount these two on my mandrel here, and then I can put that in my um, hex collar chuck and just skim off the top and, and, and uh, you know do all that wonderful stuff without having to worry too much about uh, indexing around because otherwise I'd have to mount it in the dividing head and, and do all that sort of fun stuff. So it's a little bit involved but end of the day what I'll be getting is some hex nut blanks with a with a 19 uh, bore hole in them that I can then mount in the three jaw and they won't be quite as concentric as, as, as possibly they could be but they'll be pretty close because it's a it's a newish chuck uh, and then I can bore that out to the minor diameter uh, get out a boring bar and put the the thread in there uh, and that that'll be simple uh, the the two the reason for two is simply that uh, this is guy called Murphy who hangs around and I know that if I make one blank uh, there's a good chance I'll stuff it up whereas if I make two I won't now whether that means I end up with two left hand nuts or whether I make a right or a left I'm, I'm not quite sure what I'll do there but uh, let's just try and get one good left hand nut out first uh, back on the lathe having put flats on here um, I've put a, a chamfer on the edge here and that's a, a 30 degree thing and it traditionally goes from the should we say the, the, the full circle out to the edge there so you've got a round contact area there um, this rather chewed up looking bit of stuff here is that is because Murphy did indeed come calling um, and uh, I didn't have this nut tightened up enough and this span round which was a bit of a, a nuisance so I've had to make up a second piece um, this one was also damaged it, it uh, where did it get there was, also, there, was there, there we go a little bit of a nick there which is a darn nuisance but it does show that you do need to uh, keep your mind on your job when you're even on these uh, relatively simple things so that's my confession for the day uh, so I've now got this uh, sitting here, I'm going to take that off, I'm going to, to uh, deburr it. Uh, I have put a groove around the, the middle there which is the, the traditional way of uh, showing a left handed nut. Uh, and because this is going to be going onto a machine where there's a left handed end and a right handed end, uh, that's probably a good thing because at least it gives a visual cue to the person who's trying to get the nut off that it might be a different sort of nut. Um, the number of people who've tried to get off left-handed nuts and, and only end up tightening them and breaking things and all the rest of them getting very frustrated is probably immeasurable. To mount my uh, nut blank up in the in the three jaw chuck, um, I, I put it in slightly proud and 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 nip the jaws up, and then used a bit of plate and a mallet to knock it down flush with the jaws. This requires that the tops of the jaws are in the same plane and and perpendicular to the the axis but uh, it works um, you know reasonably well so uh, based on that I'll then use my boring tool to take that out to size and then use my um, internal threading tool which I made up in a, in a clip some time ago 
to uh, to put a thread in. Uh, this bit's actually the probably the easiest bit, really. So uh, we'll see how we go. After all that effort, here it is. And uh, if I can remember to turn left hand nuts the right way, uh, that fits on there quite nicely. A uh, little, little bit of uh, movement, but uh, probably comparable to uh, this one. This one's a little bit smoother, but I'm not quite sure whether that's uh, size or whether it's just uh, it's a little bit um, you know more worn because it's it's uh, older, all that sort of thing. But uh, it works. It should do the job quite nicely. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one.